Well, hello, my name is Margaret Mackay from the JISC Regional Support Centre Scotland and today I'm with Matthew Clark. Hello Matthew. Hello. Um, today we're going to talk about, Matthew's going to talk about his experiences of moving from school to university and Matthew you moved from New College Worcester to um, being a first year student at the University of Glasgow. That's right. Great. Um, so we're really going to talk about the, the journey that you have undertaken um, in terms of planning, preparing and moving from school to college. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you then, um, as a prospective student, Matthew, um, what kind of planning or preparation did you undertake prior to choosing your university and your course of choice? Mm -hmm. um, well, for me, this question takes me back to the time when I was starting to plan out uh, that I wanted to go into higher education and for me that was university so I thought as, as a student who was getting good grades I would like to go to a university that first of all um, is of a good calibre um, and this is something that haunted me through my uh, entire university research as I wanted to go to a university that uh, gave me the course combination that I wanted but was also very good. So I started off with the league tables giving me an idea of aha these universities according to UCAS that deliver my course are also according to these league tables very good. Mm -hmm. So this essentially identified universities that I was interested in researching a bit further mm -hmm. and uh, you can get good league tables from either the Times website or the Sunday Times or the Guardian, mm -hmm. pardon me, mm -hmm. which uh, I used uh, the Guardian league tables which you can break down by subject for universities. Mm -hmm. So then after this uh, what I did was went off and uh, got hold of um, university prospectuses just as any university or college will produce and uh, just explored all around their, their website and information about the, uh, the, the cities and towns that they're based in as well mm -hmm. to sort of get a feel for what these institutions were like and uh, what, what the course content was, whether they would offer you time to study abroad if that was what you wanted, mm -hmm. how flexible the different modules you could study might be, uh, what uh, the, the compulsory subjects mm -hmm. you'd cover in the first few years of study would be. Mm -hmm. Because of course not only are you looking for a subject you're interested in, different universities will go off in completely different directions so it's nice to make sure that they've got on offer something that is of interest to you and uh, in mm -hmm. the case of Glasgow that's what I found. I found some, some very interesting courses. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a website with lots of information on that sounded brilliant to me and then uh, the, the final thing I added to this formula was as I've mentioned before to go off and research the local area as well. Mm -hmm. um, now uh, for me Glasgow is very far from home um, and somewhere I'd never been before so I really needed to do my research here so the sorts of things I looked at as a visually impaired person were public transport, how good, uh, link, how good a links does Glasgow have, mm -hmm. well brilliant by rail uh, via the West Coast Main Line or by air, you've got a great airport, mm -hmm. well, two really. Um, and then locally, um, you've got um, buses running seven days a week, which uh, I'm not used to from where I come from. Um, and as the university is in the West End as well, we benefit from Glasgow's subway system. So uh, to start off with, that's brilliant. And then being in a big city as well, you don't have to look far to find out about all the great events that, that are on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and the final mixture to looking into where you're to study as well is just to visit the place and get a feel for whether the whole area is what you've anticipated it might be. Uh, whether the university has got the feel you hoped it might mm -hmm. um, and to find out from the horse's mouth really about the uh, courses and so on and that's what we did and for me in the case of Glasgow that all worked out well. So that's the path I've taken there to researching where I'd like to study. Excellent and, and as part of that research Matthew did you um, 
research and look into the kind of um, support services that the university would offer for students uh, with visual impairment? Mm. Um, well, for offering um, support to students with visual impairments, this uh, and researching it is, is quite similar as to any other disability, really. Um, so another part of my research and planning and ultimately visiting the universities was to test the disability service, quite literally. Mm -hmm. Because after all, at the end of the day, these are going to be the people that are helping you to implement uh, the support to enable you to learn to your best potential. So you want to make sure that they are up to that job, mm -hmm. that they are worthy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first port of call that I would make myself into the research into universities was to contact the disability service and say, hello, mm -hmm. I'm a prospective student, I'm interested in coming to your university to study, um, and I'd like to arrange a visit. Mm -hmm. um, so what we actually did was to organise our visits to the university through the disability service, because then we would not only get an idea of the university, and often by getting to meet the academic staff as well, um, which you often don't get to do on a one-to-one -one basis on open days, mm -hmm. we were able to meet the staff um, as, as well as seeing the university a lot more close up and personally. Mm -hmm. um, and also while meeting the disability service, another essential thing to do is to try in one way or another to test how they might cater to your needs or at least one of them. Mm -hmm. So for me as a visually impaired person and a braillist, one thing to do was to ask on my visit, uh, when you're handing out um, prospectuses and information, I want that in braille. Um, now, I don't always use braille mm -hmm. and I'm not going to be sitting down there and then and reading it. Mm -hmm. But the important thing here was to test whether they were up to the job. And in the case of Glasgow, again, when I arrived, they were. The first thing uh, they said to me when I turned up was, yes, we've got these Braille prospectuses here for you, mm -hmm. which to me was a pass <laughs> compared with one other university that I visited. Um, and I was, uh, I was told by the disability service that they had a disability coordinator in the library mm -hmm. um, who could show me all of the equipment they had. They didn't need to tell me anything about it then and there because this coordinator could tell me everything. Mm -hmm. So we met this coordinator and this coordinator said to me, I've got no idea where even our equipment is. It's over there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, so we went off and found it without his help mm -hmm. before a few minutes later this guy joined us uh, to, to which I, I asked him, oh, you, you didn't uh, tell me that you had an embosser here. And he said, oh, is that an embosser? I've worked yes. here five years and I don't know what it is. Yes. And that to me was an instant fail mm -hmm. because you know someone had had the thought to buy an embosser but they didn't know what it was, they yes. didn't know how to use it, and this guy joked to me, if you come here, you'll have to show me how to use mm. it. Yes. You know, you want to go to a university or college that can work in partnership with you yes. for your benefit, yes. Yes. Um, and not that you, you have to teach, yes. because that, that's just not good enough. Not the other way around. Uh, exactly. So, uh, as a prospective student, when you... Um, contacted the university and you engaged with a disability support service, mm. the, the clear indication was that they were able to provide you with the resources and support and the information in the formats that you needed as a prospective learner yes. and that gave you some insights into, uh, and into how the kind of experience well, that you might have. Yeah, into the yeah. experience I'm, I might have once I was there yes. or at least as, as well. Yes. How much they understand and appreciate my needs. Yes. And thus, you know, even when issues come up, then you can be confident that they are able to work with you. Yes. To combat these issues and have an outcome that works for you as a student. Yes. Um, so th Absolutely. those were very good signs with, with um, yes. the research as well. So preparing and kind of doing your research in advance. Yes. yes. Um, and obviously when when meeting them asking um 
you know, these are the needs that I have that I've identified. Mm -hmm. um, what what can you offer me? How mm -hmm. um, how might a student with my disability work mm -hmm. with uh, a, a support worker, let's say, which they, they provide to me at Glasgow, yes. um, and asking them about all the facilities that they have, mm -hmm. past experience and so on. Yes. So when you were accepted to university, mm -hmm. um, obviously you were going to work with the, you know, the disability service to prepare your support for learning. What did you do? How did you work together to identify exactly what you needed? Okay. Um, so in the case of Glasgow, obviously I did my research, I visited, I talked with the disability service. It was all what I wanted. So yes. I applied and thank goodness I got my place. So. Once this place was confirmed, um, as I only had a conditional offer, so it was only once this offer was accepted on my getting my results that sort of everything kicks into action mm -hmm. and that we really started to work out the finer details. Um, so what happened with me was that uh, bef before I arrived, um, I made sure that they were in touch with me. I found out who my disability advisor would be. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to her over the, the telephone about everything that I, I thought I needed and mm -hmm. asked her what she might add to it. Mm -hmm. And that was all really put into place once I arrived. So, mm -hmm. um, and actually... So that was quite an important part of it, actually planning and preparing in advance together. Yes, uh, work, working in, in advance together and, and not waiting until you, you turned up to make contact as yes. well. I wanted to make sure that they remembered me yes. um, before I arrived and that they were ready for me. Yes. Um, and arriving, obviously, in Glasgow's case a week before classes start, as uh, they have one freshers week here, mm -hmm. is you've got that time not just to party, which <laughs> I didn't really do, um, sadly, mm -hmm. um, but you've got that time as well to get things set up and that week we, we had a meeting um, with, with the me and the disability advisor and with, with other people that were concerned with me as well. Mm -hmm. And that was a time when I could be introduced to my support worker and so on yes. as well. Yes. yes, So what we did with all this time before my arrival and during Freshers' Week was to work out the, the finer details. This is your support worker. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how it works. This is what they can do do mm -hmm. uh, for, your, for your lecture, note-taking and mm -hmm. scanning mm -hmm. um, and here is the space where you can work mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. separated room we have in the library that only you have access to along with other students with certain disabilities so mm -hmm. that you've got quieter space mm -hmm. that is set up with the scanning mm -hmm. equipment and the computers with magnification that you'll need and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really this time, mm -hmm. once your place is confirmed, to make sure that everything is set up yes. as well as is reasonable yes. for you to then get started yes. uh, on, on, on the course. On the course. So at this point, obviously, a lot of the work that you did was in collaboration with the disability advisor and your support um, mm -hmm. individual who was supporting you, um, mm -hmm. your learning assistant. Did you meet with staff from your faculty prior to starting your course? And, you know, were you involved in chatting with them about the plans that were needed to put into place in advance? Um, so far as my support goes, my contact with the faculty in that regard um, was non-existent. I did contact the uh, the schools of the subjects that I was interested in, at, interested in at the University of Glasgow while I was doing my research into the university to ask the sorts of things of the staff. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a bit more about the course please? Um, I, I'm concerned as to whether this is as interesting as I thought but no it is interesting that's great um, but I only did that from a point of view of the course not from the point of view as a student with a disability mm -hmm. who is expecting a certain level of support 
and help on your part mm -hmm. for me to be able to best access your course, enjoy that course, mm -hmm. to learn from it and then succeed in the examination. Mm -hmm. That is uh, something I regret for, for not doing in advance and mm -hmm. it is actually something that I'm planning on doing in advance with the, uh, the schools and their staff for my second year of study. Yes. Um, because, you know, you know, the disability service, they are the people from behind the scenes mm -hmm. who help you to implement the support you're going to get. But what we have to remember is that the people on the front line, the people who are teaching you, mm -hmm. are not this disability service that mm -hmm. you might have hopefully been in contact with for far longer. Mm -hmm. And even if the disability service are doing a good job at pulling strings, sometimes strings have been cut, sometimes strings aren't listened to. So not only do you need to engage in a partnership to arrange your support with the disability service, it's best really to engage with these schools, mm -hmm. colleges, departments, faculties, whatever you'd like to call them, yes. on the front line as well, mm -hmm. so that you can tell them, I would really appreciate the PowerPoint slides uh, being given to me in advance of the lectures so that I can read along with them in class as I can't see them, yes. or to ask your um, tutorial uh, tutors um, I need these worksheets in advance so that I can make sure that PDFs are scanned into accessible Word documents mm -hmm. um, or that I've read things in advance as I can't read them mm -hmm. so quickly in the tutorial so yes. thus I'd miss yes. out. Yes. Um, yes. It's about making sure with them that you're going to be able to learn effectively yes. as well as just telling the disability service what you need yes. and having that personal relationship with the people who are teaching you is, I found, as I have improved on that, mm -hmm. far better because then you can show them that you're enthusiastic mm -hmm. and that you really want to learn, yes. you really want to enjoy this. Yes. Um, and if they help you, wow, what a difference that will make. Yes. Um, so that almost infuses infuses them, mm -hmm. not all of them. Mm -hmm. You do get some academic staff who aren't as good, but mm -hmm. that happens mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. You've got to give it a try though, because when it works, it's so worthwhile. Yes. And having that personal relationship with um, staff at university mm -hmm. is not something that is automatic, like at school. Yes. And from someone who looks back to school with, with with pleasure as I hope you might in the future as well you'll realize um, that personal relationship with with teachers is something that really helps you to to absorb the subject and to, to be effective in, in its learning yes. so it's something that you need to make sure you still get um, in further education absolutely so it's a really important partnership and it's something that is worth um, investing in no. and engaging in relationship Absolutely. with your course tutors. As a as a student, um, you know, who is was and is eligible to apply for disabled students allowance. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people talk about it as DSA. Can I ask about um, your experience of DSA and what steps you undertook to apply for this funding, Matthew? Okay. Well, first of all, these steps do take some time. So, uh, my first piece of advice with regards to DSA um, as with student finance in general is to plan it out with time to spare. Don't rush this. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole DSA system or disabled students allowances is, um, it's not a loan, it's a grant mm -hmm. that you never see the money of but the money is provided to secure the support for you in forms of equipment and in forms of non-medical support mm -hmm. from staff mm -hmm. that enables you to access the learning materials and to complete the course successfully. Um, so the first stage of making sure that you obtain this is to apply for it. Uh, DSA applications tend to come out at about the same time as um, normal student finance, the mm -hmm. student loans mm -hmm. uh, for your maintenance or the 
tuition fee mm -hmm. loans if you're not a lucky <laughs> Scottish or Welsh person. <laughs> Hurrah! Um, so, as usual, they ask for lots of information. The form takes some time to fill in and it takes them some time to get back to you. Mm -hmm. But after the initial application, what should happen is that you should then have a DSA assessment. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where your needs for the grant are assessed. And if successful, they allocate what money you'll need for what support and then this in a lot more time should eventually be provided. Mm -hmm. So what a DSA assessment seeks to do um, is not just give you something that you think will help um, because a government uh, system would never give it to you that easily. <laughs> what you have to answer to them is I have X problem created by my disability which can be solved by why. Mm -hmm. So in an example in my case would be I can't use a computer um, but I can use a computer with magnification and speech software so mm -hmm. hurrah they'll give me money mm -hmm. for magnification and speech software. Um, and the same is true for any other bit of equipment which you feel might help you or that they recommend might help you. Mm -hmm. You need to decide what will best solve the, the difficulties and challenges which can be created by your disability. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that way uh, you will decide on getting lots of lovely helpful technology. Mm -hmm. um, and once that equipment, you know, once it's processed and the equipment arrives, then that is, I guess, some of the sort of strategies that you would use uh, to undertake or to access your, your course material because you would be able to use the magnification software or mm. listen back to the text exactly. which, you know, you would access as part of your course mm. material. Mm. Okay. Um, and an another strategy I, I used there was to have a voice recorder which I was given by DSA so I yes. could record lectures and yes. jump back to bits which I might want yes. to repeat. Yes. Um, now something you, you should be warned about again is if you have a conditional offer um, of, of a university place that you accept just like the guaranteed place DSA isn't released until you have a guaranteed place at university. Mm -hmm. um, so this does mean, unfortunately, that sometimes your DSA equipment won't be paid for and then shipped to you until very close mm -hmm. to when you need to start your course. Um, and th this is even if, if you have been able to apply for it in enough advance mm -hmm. for that to be possible. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, an issue I did have was that my equipment was released very late mm -hmm. um, and I did have to go for a few weeks without it. Yes. Um, this is a difficulty that if anyone encounters is not your own fault. No. Um, you can't, and you can't blame yourself for it. So uh, yes. the, 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 what I had to tell myself during the, these difficult weeks was that, you know, this isn't my problem no. I can't help the fact I've got into it so everyone's got to understand that yes because I, I can't work effectively until I have this Your equipment, this equipment yep. that is supposed to help me yeah um, so you know, yes. if you have any such problems don't worry yourself no. don't, over it yeah, don't just, yourself. Um, uh -huh. just make sure that the people who are supposed to sort it out know about it mm -hmm. especially if like me half the problem arises because your letter telling you that you had the award went missing in yes. the post. Yes, <laughs> thank you, that's very useful insight. Um, for other students who are about to apply for Disabled Students Allowance, if they're thinking about starting college, any any just advice that you would you would suggest? I know you said apply as early as you can, mm. you know, be organised, be prepared, but any other advice? Um, a general good bit of advice is, as with the student finance and the DSA, do everything in good time, plan ahead. Um, now you won't be able to plan everything ahead, but 
as I have, if you have a problem, learn from it in hindsight. Things done ahead of time to plan for the future give you the time for things to go wrong and give you the time to sort it out before yes. it's going to cause another problem. Yes. Um, so for me, this has meant this year learning that I do need to be in touch with um, the course lecturers and teachers and tutors in advance of my course starting yes. to tell them about my needs and how they will be able to help me so that I can learn from and enjoy their course yes. far better. Yes. Um, and this also includes obtaining reading lists and notice of textbooks in advance so that I can make sure that we have accessible copies of those produced, whether it be that books are scanned by my support worker who mm -hmm. is paid for by DSA, mm -hmm. or whether it means myself asking publishers for accessible copies of these books, mm -hmm. or as the University of Glasgow has, um, as I would hope any university or college will, actually notifying a person whose job it is to contact the publishers and try to obtain accessible copies of books. Yes. Um, this is a very time consuming process yes. so to give yourself that time before the course starts yes. to let it all be sorted out ready for your uh, learning. Yes. That, that's the best way to go about it. And I guess if you know in advance and you've worked with your course tutors as well as with the disability support service, you know the core text and the, the material for your course and any publications that you need to access then, um, you can again work collaboratively with them to look mm. at how you can get those uh, publications in alternative formats as early as possible. Mm, definitely. Okay. So, um, you know, you've talked about um, your experience in applying for, for university. You've, you've talked about the kind of research that you, you, you carried out in advance and then the, the journey that you, you undertook um, when you were accepted to, to, to the university and, and you've talked a wee bit about the DSA process. Um, and you've also kind of mentioned some sort of lessons learned. What would I do differently and how would I, I cover that? But mm -hmm. just to kind of... Um, to sort of start summing up, I mean, any person, any student who is thinking about embarking right now on preparing to apply for a college or university, any words of wisdom now that you're um, a, a, almost an academic year down the line, Matthew? Um, well, first of all, um, as as many people said to me when I went to apply for university, and as I hope uh, people will be saying to you as well, is uh, good on you. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for doing it um, because it's it's a great thing whatever you want to study to go and give a go at um, so congratulations for getting there and I wish you all the very best um, the whole process can sometimes be long-winded especially in uh, setting up your student finances your disabled students allowances um, sorting out the reading lists, the core textbooks, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to getting things from publishers who do tend to be very slow and sometimes very unhelpful. A lot of these things take time. So always plan ahead, but uh, whenever difficulties arise in that or anything else, just remember how well you've done mm -hmm. to get to where you are mm -hmm. and that often the problems that arise aren't your fault. No. They'll often be related to the disability that sadly you have and the barriers you have to break down because of that. Now fight those barriers, but those barriers aren't there because of you. No. And you can't beat yourself up because they're there. So mm -hmm. uh, keep your chin up and always remember how, how well you've done and just go for it and give it your best and at the end of the day when that's done congratulations to you and all the very best and enjoy your course of study absolutely 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 matthew thank you very very much for sharing your experience i know that um, many people will find your um, story and your journey and your advice very very useful indeed so thank you so much you're welcome